Hello guys, in this video I want to discuss this problem. I want to show you if you have the finite number of eigenvectors, then the set of these eigenvectors is going to be linearly independent. Why I'm interested in this problem? Because in my videos I want to move towards proving a Jordan canonical form for a linear operator over a finite dimensional vector space over complex numbers. And this is like small step, it's really important to show that our uh, eigenvectors as a set are actually linearly independent. So let's start this proof. Uh, so let's recover what is a linear independent. So we're saying that our vectors uh, we want up to be when is linear independent. If we're gonna take the uh, sum of those vectors multiplied by some constant uh, c1 times v1 plus up to cn times cvn, we're gonna set this equals to zero and then we're saying this is linear linearly independent if from here it follows that all our constants is going to be equals to zero in cn equals to zero yeah so okay so let's consider this thing and how i'm going to prove that uh, the set of our eigenvectors are actually linearly independent i'm going to prove this by induction so proof by induction it's technical proof but for this proof, uh, for this theorem, it works really well. So proof by induction. And for proof by induction, we have first that our induction step. And for the induction step, we're assuming that we have just one vector. So C1, V1 equals to zero. We have this thing. What we know about an eigenvector? We're saying that eigenvector v1 is not equal to zero. Why? Let's say that v1 is equal to zero. What is the definition of eigenvector? We know that uh, v1 is an eigenvector. If we're going to take matrix A multiply by v1, and this is going to be equal some constant lambda times v1. And we know if we have uh, an eigenvector, we have corresponding only one eigenvalue for our eigenvector. But if v1 is going to be equals to 0, then what I have? I have a times v1 equals a times 0, so equals 0. But from this side, the 0, I can multiply by any lambda, because any lambda times 0 is 0. So for my eigenvector, which is 0, I have a lot of different, infinitely many amount, uh, different eigenvalues. So that's why we're assuming that v1 is not zero. So if v1 is not zero and I have product of two uh, quantities, which is zero, it from here follows that c1 must be equal to zero. And indeed, what we, what we got, we got that <laughs> the eigenvector by itself is linearly independent. Okay, so induction step is check. Okay, let's do the next one. Let's assume that uh, it's our second step. It's actual induction. Let's assume that uh, we have that v1 and v n minus 1 as the eigenvector is linearly independent. If it's linearly independent, what I want to show from here, I want to show that uh, v1 and the set of n vectors is also going to be linearly independent. And how am I going to show this? I'm going to take this expression. And what I know about this expression that I can apply uh, my linear operator T. So here ah, I can apply my matrix A to the left and right hand side. So let's do it. And what I will get, I will get that a of c1 v1 plus cn vn equals to zero, uh, equals to a times zero, a times zero, times zero. And from here I will get that uh, c1 a v1, why? Because this operation is linear up to cn a vn and any matrix times by zero vector is just zero. And here what I know, I know that each of these vectors is an eigenvector. So for corresponding vector, we'll have C1 lambda 1 V1, where lambda 1 and lambda n is corresponding eigenvalue 
plus plus cn lambda n dn equals to zero. Okay, so you ask me, okay, so what what I what I what kind of expression I had? I had this expression. I apply my matrix A and I got this one. Yeah. So what is next? But next is a small trick. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take uh, this expression and let's say multiply by lambda one. No, but let's multiply by lambda n. What I will get? I will get that c1 lambda n v1 plus plus c n lambda n v n equals to zero. And you can see what when I have these two uh, expressions, I can take right now the uh, first, the second one, and subtract it from the first one. And what I will get? I will get that uh, c1 minus lambda 1 minus lambda n v1 plus. Then I will have lambda 2 minus ln v2 and up to the last term. And for the last term, we can see that we have the same expression, so it's going to be cancelled. But for the previous term, we're going to have it's cn minus 1, lambda 1 minus lambda n minus 1, uh, v n minus 1 equals to 0. And what we're doing, we're proving that this sector is linear independent. But by our assumption, we know that set of n minus 1 vectors is linear independent. So from here follows that uh, each of this constant is going to be equals to 0. So I will get that c1 lambda 1 minus lambda n equals to 0, uh, c2 lambda 2 minus lambda n equals to 0, and the last one, uh, c n minus 1, lambda n minus 1 minus lambda n equals to 0. And here in our theorem we made an important assumption. We are saying that we have distinct eigenvalues. So each of this term is not equals to 0. So from here follows that all ci, that c1 equals c2 equals equals cn minus 1, and this one is equals to 0. And we're almost done. Why? Because we know that this all uh, coefficients equals to 0. And then we're going to come back. We're going to take these coefficients and going to come back to this expression. And you can see that all coefficients except the last one is going to be equals to 0. But for the last one, I'm going to left just with one term. That's here. For the last one, I'm going to left just with one term. Cn times Vn equals to 0. And by similar argument to my induction step, from here I will get that my Cn equals to 0. So, and what we got? We got that, yes, indeed. So, by induction, any finite set of uh, eigenvectors is going to be linear independent.